Gossip at the Corpse Cart contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Coven members, we have some important information for you regarding Georgia's upcoming Senate runoff election! Woo! So, you might be thinking, didn't we just have a really painful election? Mm-hmm. And haven't I already seen these people's names on a ballot and aren't we done yet? But mm-hmm. no, there is an upcoming runoff election in the state of Georgia. It is incredibly important. So what the heck is a runoff election? Under Georgia's laws, a Senate candidate needs to hit 50% of the vote in order to avoid a runoff. So in the election in November, neither of the state's current Republican senators, bleh, David Perdue bleh, and Kelly Loeffler, bleh, bleh, reached that cutoff, meaning both contests will go to a runoff election on January 5th. 2021. Mm-hmm. And these two races will decide control of the Senate for the first two years of President elect Joe Biden's first term. But here is the key Democrats need to win both races in Georgia mm-hmm. in order to control the Senate. Okay? Mm-hmm. So many important pieces of legislation hinge on these races protecting the Affordable Care Act protecting folks with pre-existing conditions, helping folks financially and also medically during this pandemic, dealing with student loan debt, basically anything on Joe Biden's agenda that you support, any kind of progressive idea whatsoever. Yeah, we need to win these two Senate runoff elections in Georgia in order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So... If you listen to our Pandemic Problems episode, you will remember my case revolved around Senators David Perdue and Kelly Leffler and... Bleh and bleh. Bleh and bleh. And their suspected insider trading, for which they've been investigated. Kelly Leffler mm-hmm. was insider trading Barbie. Her husband is the CEO of the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange. She has a background in stock trading, Mm -hmm. and she got classified coronavirus briefings back in January, and then instead of warning her constituents about the very real threat of the coronavirus and COVID-19, she decided to sell off all her stocks to make money. And invest in stock that she knew would also skyrocket. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of craven person that is currently representing the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Purdue, no better. He did similar stuff around stocks. He also has repeatedly voted against protecting people with pre existing conditions and then lied about it. Mm-hmm. Both Leffler and Purdue have downplayed the threat of coronavirus and endangered the lives of millions of Georgians. They're bad news, people. They're bad. Mm-hmm. They're not great. So their opponents on the Democratic side are John Ossoff, who is an investigative journalist who has fought tirelessly against corruption, and the Reverend Raphael Warnock, who is a pastor at Dr. Martin Luther King's former church, and he has also done a lot of work for Medicare and the ACA, so Mm -hmm. very good options there. Should Mm -hmm. these two be elected, they have both committed to co-sponsoring and voting in favor of the Equality Act, which is a crucial federal piece of legislation that would finally guarantee explicit protections for LGBTQ people under our nation's existing civil rights law because that doesn't currently exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So their opponents are both anti-LGBTQ extremists who will, will undermine the rights and well-being of that community. It is crucial to do everything we can to ensure that Ossoff and Warnock win their races. That cannot be overstated. So, for Georgia voters, here are some key dates to remember. December 7th, voter registration deadline to vote in the federal runoff election. You must be registered by December 7th. Then, on December 14th, 
advanced in-person or early voting begins. So you can vote as early as December 14th. Get your vote in when you can. Highly recommend that. As we've mentioned, January 5th, 2021 is runoff election day. Big day. As a side note, huge, huge. As a side note, if you will turn 18 by January 5th, 2021, then you can register right now to vote in this election. But crucial, check your registration status because Republican politicians have purged voter rolls in recent years. So you need to double check that you are still registered or you can find out how to register at Georgia.gov. Make sure you do Mm -hmm. that. So important. And you don't need to live in Georgia to get involved. You can join us, us gals, in the fight to flip the Senate by donating and volunteering with Fair Fight, which works to promote fair elections in Georgia and around the country, encourage voter participation in elections, and educate voters about elections and their voting rights. And of course, you've probably heard of Fair Fight before because it's founded by national treasure Stacey Abrams. And you can find out more at fairfight.com. So get out there and let's flip the Senate. Let's do, do it. it. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Gossip at the Corpse Cart. We are the Wine and Crime Gals. And in our little spinoff show, we talk about some stupid shit you probably already know about. And also, you probably said to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also read publicly the worst things that you have ever done. Mm-hmm. So thank you for that. Yeah. It's and, the best. Uh, Yeah, it's been a fucking week. I don't know about you two. Why this week, like December just feels like a vat of molasses. Oh, a thousand percent. And we're also on day like seven of ten catch up recordings in a (sighs) row. I was going to say this. It feels like it's going by way too fast and I have way too much to do. And like days just get like they just disappear with like random Things that weren't well, were not true. expected that pop up. Yeah, that is true. Like the days individually pass at warp speed, but mm-hmm. like the time feels like molasses. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Everything COVID. is dust. Yeah, everything is dust. It's COVID. So mm-hmm. anyway, welcome to this joyful, refreshing show. We're doing yeah. it. Let's start out with some crazy headlines yes. from Amanda. Yes. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of really fun ones this month. I have selected six of my favorites, so I will begin now. All right. Seeing as how it's month one million of coronavirus, I think we're all trying to get out of our cooking slumps, you know? This person, rather than just trying out Mm HelloFresh, got a little too creative. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Oh, no. This is from Fax News, my favorite. (laughs) Yellowstone visitor banned for cooking chickens in thermal hot spring. (laughs) Wait. Wait, like not alive? Uh, Well. Oh, no. I think we'll get to it. Oh, my God. Okay. The article states, this guy's goose is cooked. (laughs) Or more accurately, his chickens were. (laughs) A man from Idaho has been temporarily banned from Yellowstone National Park after pleading guilty to charges stemming from an August 7th outing. Okay, so this is a recent, like, catch-up on a case from August, during which he was found cooking chickens in a thermal geyser. (laughs) The man who was among a group of 10 visitors was spotted hiking toward the Shoshone Geyser Basin with the group who were seen carrying cookware toward the thermal feature. A park ranger responded to find the group in possession of two chickens inside a burlap sack. <gasps> oh, God, I think they oh, were alive. Alive <gasps> chickens? Oh, That's my God, up. that is fucked up. Otherwise, it's basically just like the sous vide rip yeah, that you do. I yeah. assumed they were already like plucked, plucked yeah. dead and plucked. Maybe they were. Maybe I can just continue believing that they were. Let's try. Yellowstone safety regulations currently... I feel like if they were alive, that would be a huge part of this article, but they're not saying it, so, so I don't know. Maybe it was two dead chickens in It might have really sack. been, like, two prepared to be cooked chickens. Mm-hmm. Um, Yellowstone safety regulations currently prohibit visitors from straying from boardwalks or maintained trails near its thermal features 
to prevent guests from injuring themselves or destroying the life forms found within the geysers and springs. Food is also not allowed in the thermal areas. <laughs> Just picturing well, <laughs> what movie was it? Was it Deuce Bigelow, Mel Gigolo, maybe, where he's just eating or somebody is like eating like a sandwich in a hot tub and like <sighs> food is just like dripping <laughs> everywhere out and floating around the hot <laughs> oh tub. Oh my god. Ew. As someone who has eaten mac and cheese in the tub, it can go badly very quickly. <laughs> As someone who's never seen Bruce Gigolo, Bruce, Bruce Bigelow, Deuce I don't Deuce think Deuce I've Bigelow. ever seen it either. But that image is very, very, very it's- easy to. To it's imagine. fixed in my mind, and there's just huge chunks of this sand, like sub mm. sandwich, just like <laughs> floating Lettuce. around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> roast beef, just like the whole oh, thing. Oh God, roast beef <laughs> makes it so much worse somehow. A tomato slice. Oh, <laughs> basically no. what I ordered from Jimmy John's. Today. Also, oh, wet, God bless. like bread is like wet uh-huh. hoagie bread is. Bleh, I can't. I'm gonna <laughs> look that up. Movie. <laughs> Food, so, floating, hot tub. Great. So I do think that these chickens were dead because this says, after pleading guilty to the charges on September 10th, the Idaho man was sentenced to two years unsupervised probation, so really nothing, during which time he's not allowed to visit the national park um, and he had to pay $600 in fines. So he was just kicked out of the park temporarily, put on a not actual probation and had to pay a fine. But I feel like there'd be animal cruelty. I was just going to say, if they were stuff, alive, I yeah. feel like that would be a dead. So I think story. they were p- prepared and ready to be cooked, but he was simply carrying them in a burlap sack, which is ridiculous in it's and of just itself. Really gross and really stupid. And yeah. really old timey. So old timey. Who has yeah. a burlap sack just literally lying around? who? Also, like burlap <laughs> sheds a lot of yeah. fibers. That's not going to be good for your cooked chicken. Mm-mm. No, it's no, not no. cute. A lot of problems. They were so, probably just there for a photo op. Let's be honest. Yeah, it was a for dare. the gram. It was they did for it for the, the gram. gram. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, two dead chickens in a burlap. <laughs> For the gram. gram. For the gram. They're trying to get verified. (laughs) Lucy, take notes. Oh, for fuck's sake. (laughs) This is all it takes. Kenyon and I made our already, our Purdue (laughs) chicken sacrifices years ago. Amanda's verification makes sense. Kenyon's doesn't <laughs> I have I can't argue that Can you even... texting us to celebrate that she figured out how to post to her story yeah like a year month. after she was verified on three Instagram weeks are you ago? fucking kidding me <laughs> well I'm learning I posted to my story twice today good job both nice. photos of Josie and they were very cute yeah <laughs> um, so Next I have headline. nothing else in my life. What else am I supposed to fucking post? You that do need fair. something to love. I haven't <laughs> left my house in a week. <laughs> I haven't. I've left my house once in the last week, but I was. I was like, Rick, I was looking at my planner today to like figure out when the last time I left my house was. Yeah, oh besides so walking the dog, I guess. But like, that's I, it. I've had a full period since I last left my house. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for drives just so I can like sing really loud and cry openly. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's really, really calming, actually. So see you around, Minneapolis. Um, so now you know I am all about expressing yourself through body art. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hi. But maybe this should have been a no. Oh. Maybe this should have gone through more uh peer review. Okay. Before Uh-oh being applied permanently to your person. So here we go. Uh Um, From the Mirror UK, which is always a phenomenal publication. Real trashy tabloid, yeah. (laughs) It's the New York Post of the UK. And I'm fine with it. Dad labeled, quote, gross for getting (laughs) poo tattoos with his kids' names on his leg. Poo? With his kids? Like shit. There's a photo on the drive. Yes. Because it's weird. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. They look like leeches. The subline or says like the dad leaves. of six captioned a picture of his inkings that were complete with flies and corn remnants 
with the quote, I got my little turds tatted on the back of my leg. Oh, <laughs> that is the worst <laughs> thing oh. I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my God. Cue the therapy. I know. Oh. It's How so did he foul. decide what the turd shapes were for each of his kids? I don't know. One He's looks more like a leaf. One's really tapered, the like flies. sir. Yeah, drink one's more water. Super tapered, problematic. One Riley's, has like a stripe. Riley's and Bobby's look the most healthy. Oh my god, Lillian, Chase, Silas. Chase and looks very fairly healthy, just a, albeit it's shorter. A little too small. Basically, yeah. I mean, I don't Silas know. is not right. And who is Whoa. this? Luda. Silas is like Ludacris. A Lala. Lola. Layla. Lola. Lola. I don't maybe, know. Maybe Layla with an accent. I don't really know. Oh well, it's Layla. Listed. It's Layla. It's an I. Oh, it's L E I. It's oh. in the. It's in the article. I just was getting too ahead of myself. So, <laughs> um, the dad. The dad. Bobby's prou- clearly the favorite. Clearly, the biggest <laughs> shit. The dad proudly <laughs> shared the picture of his new inking, and the internet was not impressed. Kenyon's mm-hmm. new podcast. <laughs> Unimpressed. <laughs> <laughs> his tattoos feature each of his children's names along with a sketch of their business. It's their shit. Oh, no. What? I can't. Oh, Viewers okay. slammed his body art as, quote, fucking gross. It <laughs> yeah. is fucking gross. It really is. Also, are- Silas actually needs a te- medical attention. Yeah. He does. I also, don't- quit ruining names. I right. used to like that name. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> No. Chase those dreams away. Oh, no. There are five turds on his leg with each child's name below them, including Bobby, Riley, Liliana, Chase, Silas, and Layla, along with flies flying around the excrement to complete the artwork. To complete the tableau. Yep. The, 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 the crude tableau. tableau. The dad who has oh, not been named. God. <laughs> uh, except Shit. all his kids were. Yeah. Shared the image to Facebook, captioning it, quote, I got my little turds tatted on the back of my leg. I heart every stinking one of them. Oh, my God. What? Part of me loves it. I mean. Because it's not my calf. I really like the. Okay, so we, it got shared on Reddit, and there's a bunch of comments. It got shared to R Trashy on Reddit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> one of the comments, uh, the trashiest thing I've ever seen, mm-hmm. just ruined your whole leg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought I had seen it all. It's not even like salvageable. Like no, you have to I like mean, it would have to be a total like blackout cover yeah, up yeah. to get rid of that. Yeah. Extra points for the realism of sweet corn in the shit. Minus uh, points for being uh, fucking. Oh my god, gross. I'm actually gagging. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then one person said, this has got to be the most original tattoo I've ever seen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And that commenter was me. What? Just kidding, it wasn't, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely believed it. And that, totally. and that commenter was Bobby Chase, Liliana, Lola, Silas, <laughs> one. Layla, 69. <laughs> oh, so, you know, just something to put in your back pocket for when you two have kids. A, a real yeah, nice that's tribute. Great. That's super great. So this wow. next one really speaks to me because just the other day, oh, clearly there's a theme here. Just the other day, I went into our group chat to brag about a dump I took that was no joke the length of my forearm. It was mm-hmm. brilliant, beautiful. <laughs> it was the size of my vibrator. vibrator. Yes. And I'm not a, I'm not the kind of friend who will take a picture and send it, but I will describe it in detail. Uh-huh. I'd prefer that. Yeah, I think most people would. So this headline, uh, again, from The Mirror UK, because it's incredible. Woman forgets to turn off Zoom while discussing her monster shit with her plumber. (laughs) (laughs) What? With the plumber? I feel that So she was on a Zoom when the plumber showed up. It was probably like, oh, hold on. I got to let the plumber in and forgot to mute herself. No. And... No. Oh, hilarity <laughs> ens- ensued. So apparently the mirror is just getting all of their juiciest, pun intended, uh, stories from Reddit because it's mm-hmm. amazing. So although lots of people can't work from home, those that can uh, have been ordered to in order to stop the spread of COVID. It can be a struggle to maintain a healthy work-life balance when working from your living room and Zoom meetings can be tiring for lots of people. 
One woman faced a stressful morning after her colleagues accidentally overheard her discussion with the plumber who had been hired to fix the toilet. Posting on Reddit's uh, subreddit, Today I Fucked Up Forum, <laughs> she <laughs> described the mortifying incident. This is actually a really funny subreddit. I highly recommend it. Quote, I had just let the plumber in to fix my toilet and he came by to tell me that it was done, she wrote. I guess I must have accidentally leaned on the button or something because I asked him about it, got up to take a look, and then came back to five or six private messages on Zoom. <laughs> I'm really hoping all anyone heard was, is it fixed now? It's been draining slowly for a while. Otherwise, everyone will have gotten to hear about the monster shit I took <gasps> that fucked with my plumbing. <laughs> you don't even need to tell your plumber that. No, they'll know. Yeah, honey. your plumber does not... You don't need to no. Mm-hmm. No. no. It would be a little funny, yeah. but it's been a massive struggle making friends with my classmates this year. Oh, oh. it was on a school Zoom. <gasps> oh no. Oh, oh no. no. COVID hasn't helped. I'm mortified that this is gonna be their impression of me now. I can't wait for that recording to come out so I can relive it in two times the speed. Oh, so man. too long didn't read accidentally unmuted myself on zoom while take talking with the plumber and got a bunch of private messages from my classmates letting me know that I'd been interrupting class with a discussion of how I wreaked havoc on the toilet oh no <laughs> so I hope that she has recovered from this incident people trying to make her feel better said lean into it you have to laugh at yourself and yeah. that should stop most people from making it into a big deal Another wrote, one of the guys in my class left the mic unmuted and said some swear words to the guys that were there with him while the teacher was telling something to the class. Poor guy didn't even notice it. I hope you know you're not in the high school or primary school and like he didn't even hear what what the teacher had said. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure you brightened up a few people's day. I mean, most people are just saying like, we've all fucked up and also don't worry about it. But that would be pretty embarrassing. (laughs) My mom. Yeah. My mom is taking college classes now, and Mm -hmm. I mean, she's like, whatever. And um, she basically was that SNL skit of like the middle aged women trying to like learn Zoom. Yeah, (laughs) Amy Bryant is so funny in that. She she was that and uh, thought she was muted and thought her camera was off and was like swearing and like being like well fuck why won't this fucking work blah 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 and like everyone (laughs) could hear her like well (laughs) it's clearly working we can hear and see you oh Oh, boy (sighs) all right this next one um is homage to the petrified pigeon that Kenyon found in her fireplace and then had mounted by a taxidermist and is now in a display Mm-hmm. Case jar I or mantle. Love, she's beautiful. Pitch. It's in a bell jar in mm-hmm. your living in, on your mantle. Mm-hmm. But had the little pigeon not met its untimely and suffocating in your chimney, maybe it could have gone <laughs> on to achieve greatness, <laughs> like maybe. this one. It was probably smoke inhalation. Let's be honest. Yeah, which it is kind of a form for of suffocation. A while it was Who completely knows? petrified. <laughs> So this is from the New York Times. The headline reads, you could compare it to a Picasso. Pigeon sells for $1.9 million. Mm -hmm. One pigeon? One pigeon. Alive? Alive. Um, The the bird's name is New Kim, a Belgian racing bird, set an auction record after a bidding war between two Chinese buyers. New Kim on the block? New Kim on the block. In the pigeon racing world, breeding brings big bucks, but never before as much, uh, never before as much as for New Kim, a two-year-old female pigeon who sold for a record 1.6 million euros, which is about 1.9 million U.S. dollars, after a bidding war between two Chinese buyers at a Belgian auction. Oh, this is odd. This is really odd. That was far above the previous auction high of 1.25 million pounds set last year for another Belgian pigeon, Armando. We're in the wrong business, I know. Yeah. A five-year-old male with a long winning record who went to the same Chinese buyer. So now now they can breathe. Them. Yeah. Oh no. Has like three and a half million dollars worth of pigeon. At Two least. pigeons. <laughs> they oh, better taste good. My mm-hmm. God. Yeah. What the fuck? And bidding <laughs> started at 200 pounds. 
Whoa. How and got long up to, was the bidding war? Fuck. Oh, uh, I don't know, but it got up high. In the sport, which dates back to at least the 1800s, homing pigeons are acclimated in a shared loft before being taken hundreds of miles away and released. The winner is the first to return. So what if you spend all this money and, and then the it pigeon just, just doesn't come doesn't back? Come You've back. literally just, it just released dies in it. someone's chip fireplace. Like <gasps> this You sport. own New Kim. Well, no. Old New Kim. Kim is very old much alive. Kim. Old, old Kim. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> you have Old Kim. Please name that pigeon Old Kim. <laughs> it's, old al- it's already Kim. Pidge, but maybe it could be an alias. Pidge yes. is the nickname. Old yeah. Kim is its mm-hmm. formal the full, name. The biblical name. Yeah, bi- the, the given name. Old Kim Lang Cohen. <laughs> old Lang Syne. <Kim. laughs> old Lang Syne. Um, uh, so soaring auction prices are only one sign of the sport's increasing glamour and competitiveness in China. Mm. Two men were convicted by a Shanghai court in 2018 of trying to fix a high stakes race by putting their pigeons on a bullet train. See, this is why <laughs> there needs to be... <laughs> That's actually hysterical. <laughs> Can you imagine being on that train <laughs> and there's just two racing pigeons? <laughs> Because Just it has losing. like a tracker. I imagine they I were loose on the train. I imagine somebody was like, doesn't matter. Well, then your imagination is sad them. because I'm imagining them <laughs> loose on the train. <laughs> Wreaking absolute havoc. I'm imagining them like one of those hawks with like the tiny little leather yeah. blinders. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So Could cute. be. Mm -hmm. New Kim had two distinctions that helped her reach such an exorbitant price. She, quote, performed as the best bird in Belgium in 2018. Wow. What a title. And she was among the last birds to be raised by (laughs) Gaston Van de Waalve, a famous breeder who has since retired. (laughs) You could compare it to a Picasso painting, Mr. Gilsbrecht said, referring to New Kim. Except that it has a shelf life. Yeah, of like, how long does a pigeon live? Six, seven years? I mean, come I on. Pigeons. It will sell more than a local American artist. That much is very clear. Yeah, it'll sell yeah, more than a lot great. of artists. Oh, Amanda 1. nailed it. Six years. million oh, wow. dollars. Oh, in captivity, they can live longer. Okay. 15 years. Great. Yeah. So apparently this is a, a very lucrative business. It says uh, Mr. Gilsbrecht, who like runs some sort of fucking pigeon Academy who got Pigeon knows. scam. Pigeon scam. Uh, <laughs> estimates that about 50% of HIPAA, which stands for, let's scroll and find out. I Pigeon HIPAA. I, care. I can only Pigeon assume. Pigeon something. Where is this? Hip-a-pig. I don't know. Something to, something to do with pigeons, I don't know. Hippa um, <laughs> Which, ugh. annual turnover, which totals about $50 million, comes is from China. So 50% of those sales. Mm-hmm are from China, and the prices still appear to be rising. Quote, 10 years ago, we sold a colony for a million dollars, and we thought it was crazy, he said. So far, the latest auction is on track to raise almost 10 million pounds. So basically just some niche yep. group of rich Chinese... Ultra rich Chinese yeah. folks are buying up all the uh-huh. racing pigeons so they can take them far away and let them go and hope so... they come back. <laughs> what is the story? I mean, what does a pigeon race look like? Literally nothing. You, you can't look, even watch it. It's you can't just whichever watch it. one gets back first. I thought polo was a stupid sport, but you know what? Mm-hmm. Pigeon there racing. are a lot of stupid sports in Most fairness. Most sports are I'd stupid. argue that Every sport is fucking stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Horse racing, I kind of get though. It's like I love figure skating so and I concrete. love uh, wa- what's water to synchronize swimming. Mm-hmm. The only two sports that matter. Is mm-hmm. that a sport or an art? Both. <laughs> Why not both? Um, okay, so this next story, we're almost done. I'm gonna go out on a limb, and that pun will make sense in a moment, and say <laughs> that this is not what your therapist meant by suggesting you get out into nature. Mm. The article, again from Fox News, I'm really pulling out some really great sources today. I mean, I have hey. one from the New York Times. We're fine. <laughs> Man arrested after having sexual relations with a tree. <laughs> 
<laughs> Presumably <laughs> without consent. I can't well, imagine. Well, he had morning wood. What can he oh, do? Oh, give a new, new <laughs> laugh to the term morning wood. This is from Naugatuck, Connecticut. Yes. A man was arrested last week after he was seen humping trees while half naked. <laughs> Witnesses called police after John Edward Figner, 36, was seen in the backyard of a Connecticut house simulating sex with a tree <laughs> and eating branches. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wow. Having a day. Oh, well, Figner. Cannibalistic sexual experience. Oh. What, mm. what tier do you think he's on? If he, if he mm. identifies as a tree, I guess it could be considered cannibalistic. Uh, Who knows? Well, was the, the tears were for necrophilia. Mm-hmm. And oh, none I of guess. those included eating. Eating. You're right. I got a mix up. It's a blend. So, it's a blend. Figner fled the scene when authorities arrived, running into a nearby house and forcing the residents inside. So he just like went into someone else's house. Okay. And when police apprehended him, he spit at one of the officers, mm. not having a good day. He was charged with felony assault of a public safety officer because spitting at a cop can get you those kinds of charges, mm-hmm. but they can just shoot you with reckless abandon and walk free. Mm-hmm. And misdemeanor <laughs> resisting arrest, <laughs> breach of peace, and trespassing. So whatever compelled this young man. Maybe it's the, the leaf hoarder serial that's killer. What I, that's this is what killer. that reminded me of, too. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is clearly a thing, a niche thing, but a yes, thing all I'm the sure same. I'm sure there's a term for it. Tree, hu- tree humper. Mm-hmm. I just love simulating sex Whatever with tree, a tree humper is in Latin. <laughs> Dendral. Dendral, dendrologist, copulator. I don't know. <laughs> we'll ask Ali Ward. Dendrous copulus. Yeah, <laughs> dendrous uh, copulus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and finally, uh, I really love this story. So, some small town mysteries are just too spooky to overlook. This is not one of them. <laughs> the headline reads Mystery Pine Street Cheese Flinger Apprehended. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? It Which all started. Pine Street. <laughs> I'm trying Which to Which cheese this flinger? <laughs> but this Which is for, out cheese? of the, the Bonner <laughs> County Daily Bee. I think it's Idaho because it's it's Jarlsberg? How dare you? Oh no, it's not Jarlsberg. It's a cheap cheese. But oh. this there's an ad on this for Idaho Central Credit Union, so I think this is Bonner County, Idaho. I'm <laughs> assuming. It all started with a slice of cheese. Sam Cornett, a local contractor, was driving down Pine Street when he noticed something being thrown at his truck. I thought that was kind of strange, so I flipped around and saw them throwing a bunch of items at vehicles and pedestrians, he said. Mm. I was in a low-speed chase with the cheese flinger, <laughs> and they got away. Oh, no. <laughs> a week later, as Cornette picked up his daughters from the Sandpoint Waldorf School and parked at the nearby state park, when he returned, he found three more cheese slices. <laughs> Cornette's girlfriend, who works at the YMCA, was also cheesed. <laughs> <laughs> After finding the slices, Cornette started looking around the park and quickly found the car he recognized as the cheese throwers. This is real vigilante justice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did what any grumpy old man would do, he said. I figured one of them must have done it, he said. All I was missing was the crackers, honestly. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, Cornette, he was, this man must be crackers. He must be <gasps> cheese All I crackers. was missing was the, the crackers. crackers. Cornette also salami, learned, honestly. <laughs> yeah. The teens had allegedly been throwing bread at pedestrians in front of the YMCA and threw cheese at a boy on a bike. At that point, he said he decided to make a report out of concerns the prank might cause an accident that got someone hurt. Mm -hmm. He filed a report with Sandpoint Police Department, then turned to Facebook. (laughs) Quote, cheese me last week while driving on pine. (laughs) They hit my girlfriend's vehicle on pine and my truck today at the skate park. Has anyone else been cheesed? This is exactly what the comments are like on my neighborhood app. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this is like last summer when there was somebody going around Minneapolis just squirt gunning at people. And I got hit twice. The South Side Squirter. (laughs) You got gunned. Which it all turned out just fine. And I got to get South Side Squirter in City Pages, rest in peace. So that worked out really well for me. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I coined that, and I will keep it. You coined uh, it? Yes. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I posted about it on Facebook, and somebody from City Pages contacted me for an interview, and I was ah. like, I was like, I'm fine, and all I care about is that people call him the Southside Squirter, and so she <laughs> actually puts like referred to him as the Squirter in the article. Yeah, oh my God. It's like, Thank I you. didn't know that. My I restorative justice is coining the Southside Squirter. I don't need anything else. <laughs> I'll put no it charges. on your tombstone. Yeah, I'm you not. You should put it on your resume. I should. Yeah. Helped apprehend the South Side Squirter. <laughs> Over 200 commenters report responded, several writing that they too had been cheesed. <laughs> Quote, I'm grabbing my wine in a to-go cup, some crackers and a folding chair, one commenter wrote. <laughs> oh my God. Heading into town tomorrow for some Friday happy hour redneck appetizers. <laughs> hey, cheese is not cheap. No, it's not. Well, this Must be, particular cheese is Yeah, cheap. it's like craft singles, because those yeah. stick really well. Gross. Ugh. Must be Packer fans, wrote another. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> One commenter included a cheesier version of the song lyrics for the song, Sweet Dreams Are Made of This, with a slightly Sweet dreams different are made version. of cheese. <laughs> Sweet dreams are made of cheese. Who am I to disagree, though? <laughs> <laughs> By later that day, the three suspects, a group of teenagers, had been apprehended. Uh-huh. Quote, they didn't confess to doing it, he said, but the box of craft cheese in the back made it pretty clear <laughs> they were loaded. Oh Cop God. cheese handed. Cornette said he later learned the same teens had been pulled over and warned previously the week before for cheese throwing. On his post, Cornette added, quote, they located the dad and he is going to handle this personally. (laughs) Guess the Pine Street cheese flinger has flung his last slice. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And those are my headlines. I love the cheese (laughs) cheese flinger. flinger. It's just like the dumbest, (laughs) cutest small town news story. I can absolutely see us doing oh, that yeah. as teenagers. I at least would have made out with the cheese slinger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had nothing else to do. There no. was nothing to do. Mm-hmm. Very quiet, very quiet life we lived. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice anyway, work. Nice. Yeah, thank These you all some for, your, good ones. for your submissions. And as usual, if you have a great headline, send it my way. You can actually go to our website, wineandcrimepodcast.com. And um, select the the contact us feature, and there's a little drop down menu for funny headlines. So send them in. Because yeah. we hired a web designer, yeah, and we that's did. a thing you can do. And, and they now can we can drop sort down our menus. emails. <laughs> <laughs> We've really made it, people. After almost four years in the business, we can sort God. our emails. <laughs> We're really going places. <laughs> but your emails. Well, thank you for that, and let's hear a quick word from our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Think about everything you've ever learned about getting healthy. There's a lot of contradictory information out there, and things like that old-fashioned food pyramid that just aren't much help. And I know I've fallen into that trap, and that's why Noom has been very helpful. It really has. So Noom is based in psychology. It teaches you why you make the choices that you do and gives you the tools to replace your habits with healthier ones. And that does not mean necessarily dieting, counting calories like a like a typical diet. Noom is mm-hmm. Noom is truly what you make it. So I liked that it helped me with food tracking because I don't know about you, but I am an emotional eater this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's really easy to just sit down and turn on Netflix and eat a bag of chips. Mm-hmm. But having Noom just in my pocket as sort of a backup and a little bit of, a you know, an accountability partner, really, it makes a difference. So you have a goal specialist as well. So if you get off track, like everybody does... Mm-hmm. You're human. So you'll get back on track tomorrow. You can talk to your goal specialist. They can really help you out. And everyone is busy. That's why Noom does not demand much of your time. They ask for 10 minutes a day. It's a really simple, cool interface. And you really do learn a lot about nutrition, like calorie density, things like that. And it, it helps you make better choices. Yeah, that's what I use it for. I use it to lower my hemoglobin A1C because I'm diabetic as heck. <laughs> so... 
There's a science to getting healthier, and it's called Noom. So sign up for your trial today at Noom. That's N O O M dot com forward slash gals. Learn how to eat again with Noom. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N O O M dot com forward slash gals. If you're ready to learn how to live healthier, sign up for Noom today at N O O M dot com forward slash gals. You know what makes this time of year truly wonderful? Hmm. The music. Mm hmm. And I'm getting my holiday music fix with Amazon Music. And by my holiday music fix, I mean constant retro throwback Christmas songs. Oh, I think Bill is going to leave me because now it's like triggering for him to hear Hey Alexa because he knows (laughs) I'm going to say like, play Mariah Carey Christmas (laughs) or play NSYNC's Christmas album and he just hides in the basement and you know what I'm super happy about it so if you have not tried Amazon Music before for a limited time you can get your first three months of Amazon Music Unlimited for free that's access to more than 70 million songs on demand and ad free play the songs you want when you want free For three months. I've used a bunch of different music streaming services before, and Amazon Music is my favorite. And you know what they nail the most, in my opinion, are like the recommended playlists. Oh, yeah. They do such a good job. I feel like some sometimes on other streaming services, I'll ask for a playlist. And it'll, you know, the first like five songs are are pretty much bangers, but then it just starts to get progressively worse. Mm Mm-hmm. And then Mm -hmm. you're skipping more and more after that, like, sixth song. And the Amazon Music playlists are just the best. They're flawless. So you can play Mariah on repeat long into 2021 if that's your jam. And if you want your relationship to end, like apparently (laughs) I do. So if you just want to stream for free, Amazon Music's got you covered. You can download the app and get access to millions of podcast episodes. Hello. At no charge. Plus, thousands of music stations and top playlists it's the best it is listen at home or wherever you are your holidays will be merrier with fun festive tunes so remember for a limited time new subscribers can get three months of amazon music unlimited for free go to amazon.com slash wine and crime that's amazon.com slash wine and crime to get your first three months of amazon music free Starts at $7.99 a month after that, and new subscribers only. Terms apply. Offer expires on January 11th, 2021. Treat your ears. Treat them. Time for some coven confessions. Yeah. So these are stories that folks have emailed us, and their anonymity will be respected. Mm -hmm. Unless they've committed a crime, and then we get subpoenaed yeah if if we get subpoenaed we gotta hand over the mm-hmm. email mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not our problem nope we don't have anything like that in this batch but we mm-hmm. do have some actual we got a mix i would say okay we got a mix we got some actual confessions we got some short but sweets we got yeah it's a good Great. mix okay <clears throat> first one what if it's from the cheese slinger oh <laughs> and they're confessing <laughs> That would be amazing. Well, what do you do? Because we do not consult each other on what we're covering. I would not have been able to keep my shit together no. during your segment. So. True. <laughs> so we'd know if this were true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Quote, on to the confession. It's short and sweet. You all discussed Drop Dead Gorgeous a lot, and I have never seen it and figured I would give it a try. It was finally on Canadian Netflix, so I flipped it on and watched all six seasons. No. Whoa. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Ra- oh, that's not, I was like, how did they get it on Netflix and we can't even get it on Prime? You've wasted a lot of your life. <laughs> oh, honey, I've no. Pa- oh, I no. patiently waited for some woman with iconic lines, but it never happened. No, it didn't. <laughs> Very confused. I waited until I heard you mention it again in an episode and realized it was Drop Dead Gorgeous. And I had watched Drop Dead Diva instead. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember that show. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Not great. Unrelated. There's, there's no way it was nearly as good. But there's also a show, I think, or maybe it's a movie about, like, cheerleaders or something called Drop Dead Gorgeous. And it's yeah. absolute garbage. Yeah. 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 If We're it's not with Kirstie Alley, 
Alice and Kirsten Janney, Dunn, Kirsten, Kirsten Dunn, freaking what's her face from Real mm-hmm. Housewives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not Shit, Brooke Shields, but the name. other one. Yeah, the other one. God damn it! I can not Amanda Peet, but the other one. You know, Denise one. Richards. Denise yeah. Richards. Yeah. Denise Richards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Woo. Okay. So thought you would get a laugh out of this and how badly I wanted to fit in so that I watched six seasons of a show oh. just so I would get the reference. <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have yet to see the real Drop Dead Gorgeous, but we'll keep a lookout for it. <laughs> it was briefly on Hulu, so you might be able to find it there still. Well, I don't know if it still in is. Canada. It's probably different. That's true. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Patiently watching six seasons. Wait, Yikes. not six episodes, six seasons? Seasons. seasons. Of Drop Dead Diva? Waiting That's... to hear any of our references. Oh, oh honey, no. no. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, May others oh. learn from your mistakes. Please, Lord. All right. The next one, pet owners. I mean, it's not great. It's not great. Okay. Oh, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Around 10 years ago, my boyfriend was in grad school and living with his best friend and his best friend's pet parrot, Fergie. Oh, Fergie Ferg. Fergalicious definition. Make them boys go local. <laughs> it all happened one Saturday night when I was staying over. My boyfriend and I had a bit of an accident in bed. I'd like to say it was sex related, but in reality, we were just eating some messy tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Which can also my, be sex related. My friend fell asleep but. on a bunch of junior men's and thought she shit the bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's happened. I love that. Story. It's so I good. Did, I did the same thing with a Kit Kat bar on a long car drive <laughs> with oh, Kenyon no. and I reached down into my crotch and I like took like yes. a like a like a spoonful with my fingers of just melted chocolate and crushed oh. wafer it's <laughs> <laughs> like nope. oh no what if yeah, I you literally don't. were like something is like wet under my it's ass so and then sandy. you pulled your fingers out and they were just brown <laughs> no what <laughs> <laughs> No. That was actually the first time I hung out with my current husband. Stop. It was the same day. Oh, my God. Well, okay. that's the trick, ladies and gents, yeah. and neither, neither so of us. Oh, you sit on a Kit Kat. <laughs> sit on a Kit Kat. Love will follow. Two for me, none for you. <laughs> okay, so. I can't break you off a piece of this because it's completely <laughs> melted between my legs. Oh, yeah, that was Twix. Sorry. Okay, so they, they eat some messy tacos. They spill on the sheets. They they change the sheets and put the dirty ones in the washer and dryer and go to bed. Mm-hmm. The next morning, we were woken up by his roommate calling out for his parrot who he couldn't <laughs> find. <gasps> oh, no. My no, boyfriend no, 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 helped no, 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 no. him search while I took care of the laundry. No. You might be able to guess where this is going now. Oh, God. I pulled the sheets out of the dryer only to find them covered in small yellow feathers. Dear God. They washed uh, the and poor, parrot. And poor Fergie's body tangled up in them. Oh, no. You're a terrible so th- person. Well, this well, was an accident. I'm he talking in- to Kenyon. Oh. Why? Wait. Because <laughs> I'm sharing it? Yeah. Oh, it's a good that's story. True. But... Yeah, that's really sad because it's not their fault. He snuck no. into the wa- washing machine. I've they actually didn't heard know. this happening with like kittens and shit. Oh. It's really it's not the dryer. Common. Yeah. Well, this if is we're where being real with ourselves. This is where the confession kicks in because this was an accident. But now we're getting to a confession. Oh, oh God! Flustered and panicked, I pulled my boyfriend aside, and we came up with a conniving plan. No, just tell the truth. He was in charge of keeping his friend distracted for long enough so I could sneak through the house with the corpse into the garage and lay the lifeless Fergie behind one of the wheels of the roommate's car. No, you have got no, to no, be no, kidding no. me. Not good. No, no. Oh, no. I am angry. That's not good. Oh. My boyfriend and I actually got married last year with the roommate as our best man. No, no, no. Did you ever tell him? No. To this <gasps> day, he still believes that he ran over Fergie himself coming home late that fateful Saturday night. Oh. But also, like, wouldn't you be able to tell 
the difference in how damaged a bird corpse is from hitting it with your car rather than accidentally washing it in the washing machine. I don't know. Like, use a basic level of fucking forensics. I don't know. My he now, was grieving. My now husband and I are so deep in the lie that I don't know if we can ever come clean and tell him that you we can. killed the parrot. God forbid anyone close to this roommate listens to this podcast because mm-hmm. you've given the name of the parrot. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's pretty much the only thing. Oh. I guess once you've become partners in crime, you're partners for life. I guess. Oh, my God. Listen, your mom... Me. I am your mom. (laughs) Very disappointed. (laughs) Extremely. And I'm telling you right now, you got to tell him the truth. Because that poor bastard has thought all of this time that he killed his own beloved pet. So he had to grieve the loss of his pet and live with the guilt. I know. I mean, I'd be devastated. I would never forgive myself if if an accident of mine had led to the death of one of my animals. Mm -hmm. I'd Mm -hmm. be so upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I gotta be honest, I kind of hope that you find it in yourself to come clean, because this mm-hmm. is a bad one. Mm-hmm. It's a bad one. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's it, bad. It was an accident at first, but then yes. you made choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's worse now. But it's people write now. in not for us to condemn them. So. No. Too late. Highly entertaining either way. Okay. Too late. So, next confession. I love your podcast and binge the entire thing and now just look forward to the notification of a new episode. Well, this is my GAC confession. I've never been able to admit it to my therapist because I'm scared to get in trouble or get put on a list. Oh, join the club, honey. When I was in fourth grade, my mom would constantly make beet water because <laughs> because I was Because wasn't I'm in- a shrewd. <laughs> because i was an anemic mexican child and as any other mexican i came to realize also uh, also is whatever something about being mexican and anemic lol she would blend it with cucumber to make it somewhat refreshing so i'd want to drink it (laughs) still somewhat disliked it most uh most of the time must have been the 10 year old rebel in me or must have been that you're drinking beet, beet water. water. <laughs> Not even beet juice. Well, Good lord. Probably the same thing, really. No. One day I was bored looking through my medicine cabinet and came across a huge bottle of Tylenol tablets. Uh. About 300 tablets. Uh. And for no good reason, because she's a child, or they're a child, I don't know. Dumped the entire bottle into the water because I liked how it magically disappeared, oh. aka dissolved. Oh no, who oh died God. from Tylenol poisoning? My mom then served the water to everyone eating at home that day <gasps> my two brothers, both my maternal grandparents, my paternal uncle, and uh, both, <gasps> my, both my parents. Oh, that could have been oh, bad. This is not good. <laughs> I was the only one who refused to drink the bloody drink because, ew, gross. I watched everyone drink it and thought how cool I was being the only one knowing the magical disappearing rocks were in the water. Oh, oh, oh. Once I became older and was educated on what Tylenol is and does, I was horrified to think that I easily could have become a 10-year-old family annihilator. Yeah. Yeah. All because science. Mm Mm-hmm. More everyone was fine apparently somehow, and somehow. they felt great afterward. <laughs> yeah. All of their pain miraculously yeah. went away. They're like, "Wow!" Now they're this- like really into beet water, but it's yes. like never had the same mm-hmm. effect since. They've been chasing that but dragon also, like, for years. Chasing that <laughs> beet water dragon <laughs> is Tylenol not acetaminophen? It's not, as far as I know. Tylenol. I thought Tylenol is the one that is acetaminophen, which you can overdose on. Oh, I think you absolutely can overdose oh, on Oh, you it. can overdose on any of that shit. It's... But I don't remember if... I thought Advil contained acetaminophen. No, I Tylenol think it's the other didn't. way around, but I'm Paris, not sure. No, it's acetaminophen. Okay. It's acetaminophen. 
Whatever. So somehow everybody was okay. Maybe they didn't drink very much of it. I don't know. Moral, quote, moral of the story, buy your children toys and keep pill cabinets out of reach, people. No and shit. don't force beet water <laughs> down their throats. I've never told my mother because she'd kill me. That's how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay. This next one is long, but I liked it. Okay. Well, hello there, ladies. This is not the worst thing I've ever done, but it is a memory that elicits a devilish grin whenever it should pop into my mind. I am not one to rock the boat, avoiding conflict at all costs, and taking the high road more times than not. So this little gem of defiance brings a sparkle to my eye and reminds me that sometimes I can be a salty little bitch. Yes. And that's okay. I love Let that. Let it out. <laughs> Spooky <laughs> little bitch and salty little bitch. Mm-hmm. I love salty little bitch. After 12 years of marriage, two beautiful kiddos, and what I thought was going to be a lifelong partnership with my better half, I was blindsided with divorce. Hmm. Now, I probably should have seen it coming as I caught him having an affair two years prior. There was also alcohol abuse and what turned out to be years of gaslighting. Thank you, therapy, for helping me understand what that is. But alas, love is blind, and I truly thought we were in it for the long haul. Now, being a child of a nasty divorce, I didn't want my kiddos the baby muffins were only three and five at the time, to experience the same thing. Mm -hmm. So despite threatening emails, drunken texts, and a barrage of awful bullying, I tried to ensure my ex and I could at least be in the same room together when all was said and done. So just taking the high road, trying to be a good man. Good for you. Let them come to their own conclusions when they're adults and their Mm -hmm. dad fucks up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As he inevitably will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, all men. Fast forward three months after dividing up our lives, moving into a new home, and trying not to ugly cry every day while working and going to school, I found out my ex was indeed having an enough, another affair, mm-hmm. which was the ultimate catalyst for him ending the marriage. Of course. Men can't be alone. Now, despite multiple health professionals, family, friends, etc., telling him to keep his shit private so the kids and I could process everything and move on, he started bringing his girlfriend around the kids... Ugh, what the fuck on. is wrong with you? And lying to us about daddy's new friend. No. Oh, that's not cool. No. Yeah. Super yeah. not cool. So you know what? Whatever you did, mm-hmm. I'm about it. Yeah, I will mm-hmm. forgive pretty much yeah. anything you did. So pretty shitty guy. As the first Christmas post-divorce approached and the idea of spending the holiday as a broken, sad shell of my previous self crept in, I tried Aww. to keep... I know. I tried to keep some normalcy with our usual festivities. Just trying to be a good mom. I'm just totally keeping it together. Making that Christmas magic for mm-hmm. those kiddos. Mm-hmm. While making our traditional Christmas time sugar cookies, I was innocently asked by my children, what are we giving daddy for Christmas this year? Mm. Well, not her May because I he already has that. May I guide you to <laughs> shitsenders. <laughs> do- poopsenders.com. <laughs> the anonymous way to send your enemies poop. <laughs> Continue. Now, the last thing I wanted to do was something thoughtful for this manipulative piece of shit. Yeah, you do not have to get your ex a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. But they're little kids. They don't know. They're putting on a good face for their kids. Yeah. However, showing my kids that even if we didn't want to be married anymore, their dad was still their dad. They loved him, and I would support them no matter what. That is when I got the best idea. We were making sugar cookies, my ex's favorite cookie. Cookie. However, being the absolute monster that he is, he enjoys them plain. No frosting, no sprinkles, nothing. Just wow. so. Oh, this sounds familiar. Red flag. Oh, my God. Red flag. Just ah. doesn't listen. I know. <laughs> that, was, that was a good thing. <laughs> Just basic like the bitch he was dating. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was at that moment that I remembered Kurt Vonnegut. Oh. <gasps> Okay. One of the things my ex and I initially bonded over was the author, Kurt Vonnegut. We loved him. We even nicknamed our daughter after our favorite short story. Kurt? Oh. (laughs) We nicknamed our daughter, Kurt. (laughs) No, Monkey from our favorite short story, Welcome to the Monkey House. Constantly referenced his writings throughout the marriage and even named one of our cats, Vonnegut. Kurt. (laughs) No, Vonnegut. (laughs) 
Now, Kurt Vonnegut could, would make these hilarious little drawings throughout his books, and one of our favorite doodles was that of his asshole. Oh, <laughs> no. It was a mere asterisk, but perfection all the same. Yep. <laughs> Remembering this, I suggest to the tiny humans that we make some sugar cookies just for daddy. Oh, oh God. Oh, yes. And even though he doesn't like his cookies frosted, we can still make them Christmassy by adding some snowflakes on top. Little stars. Oh, and brown yeah. stars. As we carved giant asterisks into each and every cookie we made for him, I was delighted knowing that when he opened that tin on Christmas morning, he would gaze upon dozens of not-so-subtle reminders <laughs> that he is a fucking asshole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. If <laughs> I fully love that it. That must have felt so I know. Yeah. your children joining in. <laughs> yes, gleefully. Oh. Yeah. This I appreciate. I'm not into the putting spiking food with anything. No. The laxatives, not into that, but this is great. You yeah. know exactly what you're putting in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it filled me with immense joy picturing him having to eat every damn cookie as yep. his loving children asked how yummy they were. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Reminding him with every bite just how badly he fucked everything up. And as the perfectly baked cookies were cooling, my daughter sweetly said to me, Mommy, these aren't very good snowflakes. <laughs> 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 to which I replied, oh, daddy will know exactly what they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God oh, bless. Conf- I had to cut some for length, but confectionally yours, better off without him. Yes. Hell yeah, you wow. are better off without him. That's incredible. That's Isn't that good. fun? <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay, we have another revenge story, a little more problematic, but I think still okay. Oh, geez. Morally. All right. Morally ambiguous. Oh, okay. Love a gray area. Back in my junior year of college, I had recently ended a long-term relationship that had gone bad, and I realized it would be a great time to be single. One night out with my friends, I met this guy who was super hot and was encouraged to just hook up with him. So, of course, I did. I was in college. It ended up being perfect, and we, we quickly became fuck buddies with zero commitment and zero effort. It was the ideal situation for me. I focused on school and work while having my sexual needs met by a super hot guy every weekend. Obviously, I was under the impression that he was single, too, mm. because that is what he said. Mm-hmm. And it was before Facebook stalking was a thing. About two years into this arrangement. Mm. That's a long time. Then I had to cut for length. So basically, th- she finds out that he's engaged to someone else. Mm-hmm. And she's oh, he's engaged uh-huh. to? Ooh. You know what? Sharing bodily fluids secretly That's is just never such a, a betrayal good to both of those not people. Okay. It's yeah. not okay. That's why that's, it's just the trust alone, but then also the risk mm-hmm. to one's health. Mm-hmm. Got to be open about having multiple partners mm-hmm. if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So she finds out he's engaged to someone else and that she's the other woman. Oof. And she confronts him, not because she, like, you know, was in a relationship with him, but because he's, because just he lied about not being, about being single. Well, and they were fuck buddies, so that yeah. is a relationship, of even course. if it's not, you know, right. monogamous. Right, right. He lied. So yeah. she confronts him. She breaks it off. He's a douchebag about getting dumped. Like, won't admit that he bro had lied. Like, just you're getting married, mm-hmm. sir. Your nuptials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I cut for length. Okay, back mm-hmm. to this. As my girls and I plan our monthly trip to Atlantic City, I had a thought. I want him to pay, but how? Well, Atlantic City is real fun when you have lots of money to spend. How can I get lots of money? I text Mr. Facebook and, well, Facebook? No. Mr. Mr. FB. Mr. Fuckboy? FB? Mr. Fuckboy. There Thank we you. go. I text Mr. Fuckboy and tell him I need support because I'm pregnant and it's his. <gasps> Good Lord. Mm-hmm. She's hitting him up styles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He asks, are you sure? Well, I'm <sighs> sure I'm not, but it's his payback, bitch. 
So I offer to do a test to confirm, but I also tell him that I don't want to keep it anyway. Mm -hmm. Clearly relieved, he offers to pay, like for the abortion. Right. And offers to drive me, dirtbag. I say, nah, my girls will take me. Needless to say, Atlantic City was real fun that month for us gals. And that's where you'd think this story would end. But revenge is a dish best served cold. And twice. (laughs) And twice. (laughs) I love leftovers. And it's even more delicious when it's not planned. Oh, God. (laughs) Like your mystery pregnancy. Fast forward five years. I'm out shopping with my four-year-old niece. Uh, Oh, my God. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I can see where this is going. She has light brown hair and blue eyes. And she had mentioned what this guy looked like. And we run into Mr. Fuckboy with his wife, who was not the same as the fiance. So it's another person that he is met oh, right now God. and trapped. Probably because Jesus, the first fiance a, found out. What a horrible person. Mm-hmm. He sees me with what looks like my daughter and could be his. <laughs> and he freezes dead in his tracks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We continue about the store doing our thing while they shop around, too. It's all just eye contact between us while neither my niece, obviously, and nor his wife. They're both completely oblivious. Right. At one point, he points to himself and mouths, mine? No. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he can't even, like... You know, he clearly hasn't, like, changed or, like, grown up at all. Like, if he was, if he had learned anything, he would have, like, gone to his wife and been like, I see an ex over there. I need to go talk to her. Like, is that okay? And, like, gone and, like, had a com. No. He's a fuckboy. Oh, my God. (laughs) Sweet, sweet justice. I look down at my niece and smile big. (laughs) Then I look back at him sweetly and apologetically smile and and nod my head yes. Oh, my God. I can't keep a poker face to win a penny, so I turn and we buy our stuff as quick as possible and get the hell out of there. I don't know what he knows or thinks to this day, but I've never heard from him again. So whatever. Fuck you, dude. Don't be a cheater. Yeah. I don't have a problem with any of this. I don't either. I mean, the child was not, you know, the child was never harmed. It's just this douchebag who was harmed, who clearly didn't even do the right thing later. He he was hardly even harmed. It's not like he started paying Mm -hmm. child support or anything. If it had gone that far, we'd be having a different conversation. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't give a shit if it's mentally, psychologically weighing on his mind for the rest of his life. He'll be fine. He frankly deserves it. Mm -hmm. If it were weighing on him that heavily, he would have tried to contact her to see Mm -hmm. how he could support his quote-unquote child. There's no financial loss. There's no, like, Mm -hmm. health issues. Mm -hmm. There's no safety issues. Mm -hmm. I agree. Fuck this guy. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Then that is what four-year-old nieces are for. That Incredible. is amazing. I mean, t- I mean, she did kind of take money from him for Atlantic City, but how much? How much is an abortion? A couple hundred dollars. Two hundred bucks. Mm. Four hundred. It really I can think? depend. But yeah. well, yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying, like, how much did he give her? Right. Probably a few hundred bucks. Who cares? No big loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was compensation also, he's a fucking asshole. for two years of exactly. him lying to her. Oh, exactly. I mean, I've stolen, not stolen, like destroyed a, a, a procedure's worth of someone's property in an angry breakup. So, like, how is that any fucking different? Uh-huh. Who cares? Yeah. He's clearly fucking fine. He had a fiance and then another wife. He can yeah. clearly afford yeah, rings. He's mm-hmm. fine. Also, he's the doing current okay. wife should maybe mm-hmm. be alerted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Next confession. It starts off saying, Kenyon, this one's for you, but I think it's really for Amanda. Oh, no. Uh oh. It's following up uh, Lucy's breastfeeding segment on mom crimes. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Uh, I was me. in quote. I was inspired to share with you one of the worst, or some would say, best things I've ever done. It's got to oh, do with milk spit up. It's got to. In March 2015, I gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, a big baby boy who loved mama's milk. No. <laughs> 
I absolutely loved breastfeeding. I felt like it brought me and my baby closer. But one unholy night, it brought me and my fiance closer too. Oh, yeah. I know yes. where this is going. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. One Sunday after watching my aunt cross the finish line at the Avon Walk for Breast Cancer, go Irish Angels, my fiancé and I decided to go to his mom's house for a family party. I was ex- still exclusively breastfeeding, but I always kept pre-pumped milk with me just in case, because you never know what's going to happen. And with me being only three months post-birthing a baby, I very rarely drank. When we arrived at the party, shots were already being poured and beers were being had. Knowing I had milk on hand, I decided it would be okay for me to have a drink or two, and I would pump and dump later. Sure thing. Get it, girl. Yeah. Well, after nine months of pregnancy and three months of not drinking much, I not only did I lose my tolerance, but I also forgot how much my family likes to do shots. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) The next thing I know, I'm pretty toasty. Mama's got to let loose, you know. Yeah, Do your God thing. bless. My son had a pretty early bedtime then, around 6 p.m. Bless his heart. He would sleep from 6 to 6. How did I get so lucky? Wow. wow. Yeah. I don't even sleep from 6 to 6. Uh-uh. You know. Noon to equivalent. noon, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to sleep from 6 to 6. I told my fiance we should spend the night and leave in the morning for him to get to work. My fiancé wasn't too keen on the idea, but decided to stay when he saw how much fun I was having with his family. So he started drinking, too. I bet if he could go back in time and change anything, he would change that moment. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) During all the fun and excitement, it didn't dawn on me that I didn't bring my breast pump. (gasps) Uh Oh. 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 So she can't. We got a gusher. Uh Yeah. Can't feed the kid because it's alcoholic. Milk. Can't pump and dump because you don't have your pump and can't drive home because you've both been drinking. Oh, my God. Quote, now I know none of you are mothers yet, but I will try to describe the feeling of when your tits fill up with milk. You can oh, feel. can't feel good. You, you can feel it coming from basically your shoulder area, and it's called the letdown. No. It's no. N- it's not comfy, but that's when you know it's you either find your baby or find your pump. I felt the letdown and thought, this isn't that bad. I can deal with this for the night. Wrong. No. No, 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 no. The letdown is just step one. And since I had never made it to step two of this torture, I had no idea what was in store. Oh, my God, because she was always able to breastfeed her pump. There's a reason why cows, like, get really upset to be milked. It's painful. The pressure. Uh-huh. Baby. I woke up at probably 10 p.m. with rock hard boobs. Ouch, oh, ouch, no. ouch, 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 oh. ouch, ouch. And, and I literally mean rock hard. As a woman who was barely an A cup, my breasts were filled with so much milk that I was a full C at the <gasps> moment. Oh my, oh. ow, oh, my tits hurt think, hearing this. Think of bodybuilder on steroids, pecs. No. Oh. I oh, couldn't. I'm literally, I'm braless always, but I'm like, clutching my boobs right now. Same. We're all clutching our boobs Mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. They hurt. I couldn't put my arms down. I couldn't (gasps) roll over. I could feel my heart beating in my yabos. No. (laughs) Yabos. Honey. It was... Poor yabos. (laughs) Yabos. It was excruciating. I didn't have my pump. I couldn't grab my kid because I'm not trying to get my three-month-old drunk on my booze milk. Right. (laughs) So my only choice was to go downstairs while the party was still in full swing and grab my fiance. I told him the situation and he put me in sucking. He put me in the shower to try to loosen me up so I could squeeze the milk out. After about 30 seconds of me screaming in pain. (gasps) Oh my god. We realized there was only one thing to do. That's yep. right. I made my fiance join me in the shower at his mother's house with all of his family downstairs. <laughs> Already hearing her screaming from the other yeah. room. So they know exactly what's going on here. <laughs> to suck the passion fruit vodka infused <laughs> milk yep. out of my severely engorged breastuses. Hey, that's love. This is how you know your marriage is going to mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Passion fruit. 
fruit vodka-infused <laughs> This is absolutely going to happen to Lucy, but it will be grapefruit vodka-infused. Oh, yeah. Be White claw. Greyhound. Yeah. Greyhound milk. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Oh, my God. And start sucking the milk out, gagging, and basically being <laughs> waterboarded by the shower the entire time. Mm. <laughs> that is love. That, that is love. Is I love. always talk about it. It's like, who do you want to be married to? You have to, you have to be okay. Like, this has to be your person, like, in the trenches. <laughs> oh, in, yeah. You know? The ugliest of times. Yeah. That's, that's who you marry. And this, this is it. This is love. Oh. And once I started feeling a little bit of relief and looked around at the situation <laughs> unfolding in front of my eyes, I started laughing, hysterically laughing. I'm sure at that moment he wanted to kill me, but he pulled through. Oh, oh my God. Thanks for always being amazing. I look forward to your show every week. Love you, gals. I have no problem with that. I also have no problem with the breast milk. It's like, it's the vomit. Really? Yeah. Breast milk is fine. And like, Breastfeed uh, everywhere. It does not bother me. It's when the it's the baby milk spit up that makes me want to fucking puke. But that's essentially straight breast milk. Though. Oh, I know. It doesn't make sense. It's just the psychological fact that it was mm. in a baby and that it's coming out of its mouth. <laughs> it's I just warm. can't. Weird. And then like it's the like weird bubbly. like pussy plugging that can happen uh-huh. on the nipples. Not uh-huh. cool. The mastitis. The mastitis. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Those are two things that I, I cannot overcome and are definitely part of the reason why I will never be a mother. Procreate. Not a chance. Mm-hmm. All right. This is one of, this is in my top five favorites. Ever told. Whoa. <laughs> oh, the it's, passion fruit infused. It's so milk. good. It's absolutely going to happen to you someday. And I want you to call me. Mm-hmm. I'll have FaceTime you suck us. them out. I would. I would, I'd It'd be do that really for you. like I'd gag a lot, but I would do that for you. I, I clean. I cleaned up your strawberry barf that one you time. Did. I feel like I can definitely suck some vodka out of your boobs. You did. You saved my ass <laughs> in what was it, Dallas? I think it was Dallas. It was Dallas. I was already gone to the airport. I was so hungover. I puked out of the <laughs> lift on the way to the airport. It was a rough morning. Oh, my God. I was so... Dallas almost killed me, you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and so did New Orleans. I know. (laughs) (laughs) A couple stops along the way, we barely made it out. Dallas was honestly worse. New Orleans, I was just really hugover and not cute for crime con. Oh, God. Cleveland almost killed me. Just Uh because we... Kenyon and I had a little post party in our hotel room, and I was just for whatever reason, really wanted to tie one on, mm-hmm. knowing full well we had to get we had up to be at on 6 a plane in the morning. <laughs> on 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a smart man. Sometimes I am you not just a smart gotta man. But I know loose. what fun is. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta <laughs> sip some breast milk. Sometimes to survive Cleveland, you have to get blackout drunk. Oh, well, that's true. Also, the, 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 the image of this poor husband being waterboarded, waterboarded I know. in the shower while sucking, milk. sucking his wife's tits. <laughs> and then she's screaming in pain and that he's doing this for her and probably scared. And, and his like, parents are downstairs. His family's downstairs. And then she he looks up. Oh. Still doing it, and she's <laughs> laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! This is my fate, okay. honey. Oh. That man deserves some praise, oh, and I don't give that to men very often. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> okay, last last little one. It's a shorty, also boob related. Yes, Great. we have a theme. Mm-hmm. Quote, I've been best friends with Alex for about 10 years, and I'd like to think I know him pretty well. And although we're both very gay, I did not think he was this clueless about vaginas. (laughs) Boy, was I wrong. (laughs) Oh, they always are. Does the storyteller have a vagina? Is that the thing? We will get to it. Okay. This girl told me she'd made this amazing discovery at work. When she'd said something about getting wet after seeing a hot guy, and Alex's reaction had been rather questionable. (laughs) Apparently, until she questioned and immediately corrected him after this incident, 
He thought that when a person with a vagina gets aroused and says they're wet, they're not talking about their downstairs, but their <laughs> boobs. <laughs> what? He thought getting wet was getting aroused and your boobs got wet. Like a sweat situation I mean, or like a milk situation? I, maybe like a milk lubricant situation. Well, or just maybe like an overall sweaty situation. Because if you no. think about it. No, it was not an overall sweaty situation. Oh, okay. I'm He's, just uh, in all these like movies, you know, these it feels pretty like pretty girls were have made. like wet tits. Sure. No. But he thought mm, bras were that's good. That's a reach. <laughs> he thought bras were good for not only keeping things in place, but also for pre- for preventing stains and keeping <laughs> no. the moisture in. <laughs> if you're breastfeeding and you're wearing a breastfeeding yeah. bra with no. the pads in it, then maybe. <laughs> he thought arousal. <laughs> Honey, no. Mm-hmm. Get so wet. Oh, wet ass but like boobs. the nip, like the nipples. That's what I'm assuming. Like, is that the duct for the moisture? That's what it's I'm gotta assuming be. he had assumed. It's got to be what he thought. Oh, nothing else makes sense. He didn't learn the truth until last year. We're 26. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Needless to say, I nearly choked on my cocktail and yelled, for 10 years, you've thought my boobs get wet when I'm horny? (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, don't they? I still don't know how he got this idea and why it made sense to him until the age of 25. 25. Unbelievable. (laughs) Yeah. That's old that's i love it that's a good one all right so those are the those are the coven confessions this month fucking well done. amazing <laughs> these so, were good these are good so if you've got some to send check out the website wineandcrimepodcast.com go to the contact page send us oh an email God. i don't think i'll ever get over the niece oh oh yeah so mine good. and then she just nods yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best part about, like, just how big of a fucking douchebag uh-huh. this guy is. Mm-hmm. My, mine, my child. You're not motioning to your server for the check, right? Yeah. Can I just warrants, have a little? This warrants a conversation. A hundred percent. No Fuck attempt to guy. contact her afterwards. Nothing. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, shall we hear a word from our sponsors? <laughs> Let's yes, do please. it. So one thing that stresses me out every time I take a shower is all mm-hmm. of the bottles, all of the stuff. There's just stuff that my hair requires. Yep. But it's actually gotten a lot better since I started using Hair Story because this stuff washes, conditions, detangles, and repairs my hair with one product. It is unreal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I can relate to that, like, product hoarding. My bathtub looks like the hair care aisle at your local pharmacy. (laughs) It's bonkers. And Hair Story is an eco-friendly brand that's best known for their hero product, New Wash, which is a revolutionary hair care product that replaces damaging shampoo. And this has been a game changer for me. Did you know that shampoo is actually one of the worst things we can use on our hair? Mm -hmm. It strips the hair of the natural oils that we need, and conditioner only really exists to repair the damage that shampoo causes. So enter New Wash. It's a detergent-free hair cleanser that lifts dirt and impurities, cleaning the hair but leaving behind our natural oils. The ingredients found within New Wash also further condition the hair. New Wash is a proprietary blend of essential oils and naturally derived saturated cleansers. So there's no need for additional conditioner on top. It's amazing. New Wash comes in three variants for different hair types, and you can take the quiz online at hairstory.com to discover which is best for you. You all know, obviously, my hair is extremely unique. Hi, it's not only <laughs> Highly unique. Not only is it color-treated in vibrant color that I need to preserve, but I also now have... Um, extensions so 
that dryness, because those extensions are not an actually like attached at the root, they don't soak up the oil into the like the shaft of the extension the same way that my natural hair does. So I need to be using products that are going to maintain that like repair and that those oils and keep them in on my hair so that I'm not getting like straw hair basically Mm -hmm. it's it's complicated and hair story has made a huge difference in my hair care hair story also boasts many eco credentials so new wash is 100 percent biodegradable new wash is also available via subscription so you can cut down on packaging waste that's amazing hair story gives one percent of their new wash sales to help with water issues so they are part of one percent for the planet which is an amazing amazing initiative some news for 2020 Whoa, we never get good news. The new wash is switching its plastic bottles to more eco-friendly packaging. So there are new pouches and they have 63% less plastic. So that's a huge deal. And this is the first of many moves in sustainability. Soon, all of their packaging across Hair Story line will be fully recyclable. They'll also become fully refillable so as to minimize their carbon footprint as much as possible. I mean, can it get any better than this amazing company? I don't think so. I love that. So for a limited time offer, get 20% off Hair Story's new wash by visiting hairstory.com forward slash wine crime. Again, for a limited time offer, get 20% off Hair Story's new wash by visiting hairstory.com forward slash wine crime. Treat the hair. Treat it. If you have listened to this show, which you are doing right now, welcome and and I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) then you know and have heard about one of our favorite companies making stylish, sustainable shoes and bags carefully crafted with eco-friendly materials like repurposed plastic water bottles and marine plastic. That's right. We're talking about Rothy's. And this season, you can give the gift of comfortable, washable, and sustainable shoes and bags from Rothy's. I definitely gifted to my mother and my sister and myself this year. <laughs> it's really hard not to gift Rothy's to yourself. Honestly. I have to. I, I went online to buy the stuff my mom and my sister had put on their wish list. And the first thing I did was buy myself a pair of shoes. It seems like every time I look at their website, there's something new that I become just enamored with. That's because there is. They do that. Yeah. It's amazing. It's kind of mean, but I love it. So (laughs) Rothy's come in an ever-changing array of colors, prints, and patterns. They're available in a range of styles. I'm a loafers gal myself, Love but I know loafer. Amanda just got like the sneakers. That's no, I got the Chelsea boot. Oh yeah, they're oh. so in leopard. You're so yep, sassy. I'm obsessed. They're so cute. They're so comfy. The best thing about Rothy's, in addition to just being like a super sustainable company, just because they make these shoes out of plastic water bottles and bags, is that. If they get dirty, if they get a little stinky, you throw them in the freaking washing machine and Uh, they come out as good as new. Blessed be the fruit. It's incredible. I love Rothy's. Mm -hmm. So check out all of the amazing shoes, bags, and they're also making masks available right now at rothys.com forward slash gals. That's Rothy's, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash gals. Style and sustainability meet to create your new favorites. Head to Rothy's dot com slash gals today and treat your feet. Trade them. As you may remember, several weeks ago, we discovered Everlywell, the company that makes at-home lab testing easy. Well, we got Everlywell at-home lab tests ourselves. I got like the health heart test. I'm not sure what test Kenyon and Lucy got, but I'm sure we'll hear about it. <laughs> and you take it at home, you send it off to the lab. And within, I think I got my results back within like a week and a half of sending it in. I mean, obviously the postal service is a little backed up right now, but it's still really amazing to be able to just do this from home, especially right now. And they went over all of these like test results with me so I can get an idea of like where my heart health is at. I have a history of some heart disease in my family. My dad had some heart disease and I'm a type one diabetic. So these are just good things for me to get to know early. And Everlywell has really given me a positive new outlook on my health and like armed me with information that I need. Yeah. I love it. Information that you can like apply immediately. Yep. So Everlywell offers over 30 at-home lab tests like food sensitivity, which I put on my Christmas list because Ooh, nice. I have my suspicions. 
Yeah. Um, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to cut anything out. If, it's if you cheese, tell me I'm sensitive to dairy, oh my I'm God. throwing out. I'm throwing the results in the trash. I'm done. But actually, <laughs> you'd probably feel a lot better. <laughs> Shh, stop. I, I took the thyroid health test. I got my results back really quickly. And I was at the grocery store when I got them in my email. So I was able to like take take some advice take take their you know prescribed guidelines in yeah. terms of diet and nutrition and it was just so cool i was like oh maybe i do need to incorporate more grains or like whatever mm-hmm. it was they also have um lab tests like uh std testing b vitamins heart health like amanda said indoor and outdoor allergies metabolism women's health testosterone tests like it's a- anything that you would need to know about your body that's not like, I mean, your body, you can't just like go into some control panel and be like, boop, 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 what's wrong with me? Mm-hmm. What am I allergic to? But this is like kind of the same effect. So yep. each Everly Well test comes with super easy to follow instructions. Every test is physician reviewed and the shipping is free. Your results are reviewed by a board certified physician. Then they're sent directly to you within days. Like I said, it was really, really quick. Mm-hmm. And you can even share this information with your healthcare provider if you want to d- dig in a little deeper and be like, you know, what does this, what does this word mean, or yeah. whatever. And just get all of these answers, ha- not having to like make an in-person appointment right now, which is kind of nerve-wracking. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. So your results are personalized and easy to understand, so you know exactly what they mean for you. So to start better understanding your health, like we did, check out Everly Well today. Yeah, and for 20% off an Everlywell at-home lab test, visit everlywell.com slash gals20 and enter code gals20. That's everlywell.com slash gals20, that code gals20, for 20% off your test. Everlywell at-home lab tests your answers your way. Treat your health. Treat it. Okay, here we go. Coroner corner. So I want to start with a special shout out to the late Keith McDonald and his child, Tegan. Keith passed away in November and he was apparently a huge wine and crime fan. God bless. Oh, oh my. Keith and Tegan had tickets to come to our Indianapolis show before we had to cancel our 2020 tour. So RIP Keith, the (gasps) coven will miss you. We will. Thank you for listening, Keith. And sounds like for being a great dad and... Yeah. Thank you, Tegan, for letting us know. Oh, Keith. Poor That's Keith. really sad. I'm so sorry. Um, also, just to lighten the mood a little bit, I have to tell you guys about an idea that Corey had this morning that he had to call me from work to tell oh, me God. about. Corey thoughts are my favorite <laughs> segment of your good. life. You're yeah. gonna like Because he this. calls you all like he's a he's a phone caller. He's a call- mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. a call guy. Mm-hmm. He's a call boy. So today he called me and told me that he was like, hey, do you remember Fran Drescher? Sure do. And I was yeah. like, the nanny? Yes. Yeah. And so his idea is that we get Fran Drescher. If only. <laughs> I, if only we were big enough to get Fran Drescher. Or develop some sort of computer software to like, talk into it and sound like Fran Drescher. We have Amanda, so we can do that. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and what then, am I getting signed up for? And then people can sign up and pay to have Fran Drescher call somebody that they're upset with and just berate them in the Fran <sighs> Drescher voice. You Incredible. basically came up with catfishing people <laughs> on Cameo as Fran Drescher. Yeah, but here's the here's but the more kicker. complicated somehow. Here's the kicker: he wants to call it only Frans. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I like Amazing. it. Amazing. I like. We're so, workshopping it. I like it. He really wanted me to share to that. Share. In general, but I was like, I'm saving that for a recording tonight. I can't just text my friends about that. I, no. It has to be shared with the world. It deserves a wider audience. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Also, somebody recently, I think on Twitter, maybe on Instagram, I don't know, somebody was like, did Post Malone ever respond to Corey? <laughs> <laughs> no. But the people want to know. Did. No, he did not. Rude. 
And also, so as some of you may know, Corey's opening a restaurant named yeah. after myself because Aww. I'm fucking funding it, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and he's... <laughs> He made Post Malone shirts with just Post Malone's face and in his, like under his eyes where he has those like script tattoos. It says yeah. Lachelle's Fine Foods under oh his eyes. Oh my God. And then the front of the shirt just says in bold, Post Malone eats for free. <gasps> I That's want one a, of these shirts yeah, I need, really I bad. I need one of these shirts. Okay. Well, yeah. our best friend Corey Hillman at All Colors is printing them as we speak. So. Okay, well. Print, Fantastic. Print some extras, I'll Corey. get one for you. Okay, so first, this first one was sent to me by my mom. Mm. And this is from the New York Post, our favorite. The headline is, Dead Man Banned from His Own Funeral After Arriving on Chair. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> like he showed up to his own funeral dead in a chair? We'll get to it, but yes. Oh, okay. Uh, starts with, Dead Man Sitting. <laughs> <laughs> story of my life che lewis a 29 year old who was sadly shot and killed in trinidad and tobago faced stiff opposition at a church when he stiff. arrived sitting in a chair not lying on a coffin according to the sun i love so this is what i want i he want one of the like embalmed yeah. in a pose yeah for my... honey that is exactly yeah. what this is that's oh. what I want then I want to be cremated but I want to be posed First. and like put on oh. display for a, a week or so there are two photos on the drive <gasps> of Che Lewis in his yes. chair oh, oh. yeah <laughs> looking good yeah, he's cute he's... I'm attracted to this no corpse. I'm gonna stop you right there well he's <laughs> cute <laughs> if he he's were not alive not bad looking he also has big sunglasses on, so. They did an amazing job. Like, this is exactly what I want. He looks so good. Okay, so we'll get to it. So the body of Lewis, who was unfortunately gunned down along with his father, Adlai Lewis, in their home. Like, wow. this, this family God. has seen an awful lot of violence, which makes this entire issue s honestly that much more comical. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll get to it. Uh, uh, I guess. So his body was embalmed in a sitting position and placed on a chair for his last ride before being buried. Decked out in a pink jacket and white pants, Lewis stopped people dead in their tracks yeah. as the mm -hmm. surreal procession made its way through the capital of Port of Spain to St. John the Evangelist Church in the nearby town of Diego Martin. But when he arrived, staff members reportedly denied him entry to his own funeral. Yeah. Leaving him sitting outside as some people apparently criticized him for not wearing a mask, oh, not realizing no. that he wasn't He's dead. breathing. Oh my god. Yeah. So Oh, so this just happened. This was just during COVID. This was not long ago. Oh, and that's god. why he was denied entry because he wasn't wearing a mask. Well, no, he was no. Here, let me read the rest of the article and then we'll break it down because it is a little bit confusing. So the funeral was eventually streamed online, but some viewers did not realize that Lewis was sitting on a chair. The owner, like they weren't prepared because this is not a common way to view a body. Okay, so here's what happened. There's the funeral home who prepared mm. the body, who put it in the chair. Yep. And yep. then he was supposed to be have his funeral at a church, and the church was what who denied entry right. because right. apparently having him sitting in a chair is like quote unquote dangerous or like against the law somehow. It was too fucking weird for the church. So here's the rest of the article. The owner of Denny's Funeral Home, whose motto... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Denny's. Denny's Funeral Home. <laughs> it's D-E-N-N-I-E-S. I, appreciate, I oh. appreciate you wanting to keep it under the family name, but like maybe <laughs> rethink that one. Well, it's in Trinidad and it's Tobago, Trinidad so they and probably Tobago. don't have yeah. regular Denny's. Yeah. Uh, and it's spelled differently, but whatever. So the owner uh, of Perkins Funeral Home, whose oh motto is, quote, <laughs> every life is unique, therefore every funeral should be unique, described how Lewis ended up on the chair. Quote, 
The family requested it, but it was something we had on our bucket list to do. So when the request came in, it wasn't foreign to us because we are aware of funerals like that abroad. Denny told Loop News. Mm-hmm. So they this as a funeral home, they knew that like th- there was this trend of like having people like propped up in chairs. Right. We've talked we've about covered. this before. Yeah. So they were like, oh, that'd be so cool to do. So when Che's family came and was like, we want him sitting in this chair. They were like, fucking rad. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. So the funeral home did it. Mm-hmm. Um. So, quote, we had him by us for three days to monitor how he was doing in the chair before we took it public. Yeah, you so don't they, want him to start to slide slouch. down or whatever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So Denny's funeral home actually killed it. Li- like, literally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My God. I feel like Amanda's gone. I know, I'm here. Oh, oh. okay. Sorry. I'm just in shock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. So here is where the issues come in. Police officer Brent Batson told the Trinidad Express, quote, we are disappointed in the reckless behavior engaged by Denny's funeral home. They didn't do anything wrong. Carrying persons in a dangerous manner is an offense with a 750 pound penalty and the police will continue the investigation into the funeral company's conduct on the road. Come on. Like, loosen up. The dude's already dead. What are you talking about? A dangerous man. Yeah, I mean, this must be specific to the laws of this area because you see funerals like this not super, not I'm not not all the time, but you see news articles about funerals like this with the embalmed and like specifically exactly. posed bodies yes. here in the it's, states. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing, and it's it's. What fucking difference does it make if they're lying down in a casket that's wide the fuck open? Yeah, was it or because, like secured was it because. To a, they did like a procession to the church of just him in the chair well, instead of like putting him in a vehicle. I mean, uh, I don't like a hearse. I don't know. I don't know that. Where I, the I hang don't up have is is unclear. They it's, just keep saying it's unsafe, but it's like, but how? Yeah, it mm. seems from the photos, it looks like he was transported there in some sort of convertible hearse. Mm-hmm. I'll put I'll put this other photo on the. Oh God, I found actually the most incredible photo I've ever seen on the drive. Hold a on. very snap. Oh, it's like a pickup truck hearse. It's, we see in the photo. Yeah. It's a. Tr- I like this hearse. It's incredible. Okay. Okay. Che Quite four. an elaborate chair as well. Well, it's like and- a gold. Okay, so here's the other thing. This family was fucking devastated. By tragedy, okay. I'm uh, I'm uploading a fourth photo, which will paint a p- paint a picture for you. Check it again. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. He's basically sitting in a chair in the back of a pickup truck with like yeah. mourners on either side. They're stabilizing He's being him. Secured. They're holding on to him. That's secure. Yeah. I've seen They're not- way less safe shit. Oh my god! Somebody on the moving road. a couch through yeah. Minneapolis is less safe than this. They're going. V- Clearly very slowly. Exactly. They even demarcated him with like, uh, what do you call those things? Did they put like a red ribbon on him? No, they put like blue, like things that separate aisles at like airports. What do you call those things? Like, like tape? Like tape? Like, like he, a- so they taped him off? No. In the other photo. Oh, the one like where a he's velvet rope on the little, yeah, they like roped him off. They roped him <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay, here's what pisses me off the most. This family was heavily affected by gun violence or just violence because, as I said, he was killed along with his father and Mm -hmm. he was ultimately placed in a casket for burial along with his dad and then also his brother, uh, Abizaja John, age 45, was also shot dead in the family home on July 24th. So, like... Let these people do what they fucking want to do. My God. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. They're not hurting anyone. No. And also, Mm -hmm. nobody else is getting hurt further Mm -hmm. by having this corpse sitting on a chair. Let's be honest. They've been through so much. They just want to celebrate 
just this young man let them like have it. the way that they remember him mm-hmm. in a dapper as fuck suit. Yeah, sitting up and looking, he looks alive. He like looks he fly looks fly. I don't fuck. He. Looks I don't blame more a put family. Together, yeah, dead than I will ever look alive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they pressed that jacket. Yeah. No, he looks amazing. Just fucking let him have it, I say. Mm-hmm. Okay, on to the next. If you have been avoiding all media for the past several days, you may not be aware of a major recent true crime breakthrough. And this is oh. from NBC. I'm so the glad three of us this. have not talked about this yet. No. Quote, an international team of amateur sleuths claim to have decoded a half century old taunt by California's mm-hmm. notorious Zodiac Killer. A.K.A. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes. Oh, yes. He was the killer himself. <laughs> and federal <laughs> authorities said they believe the code breakers appear to be on solid ground in following the mysterious killer who fatally stabbed or shot five people in Northern California in 1968 and 1969. It was mm-hmm. the 60s. I really hope Jake Gyllenhaal is one of the code breakers. Uh, he's not. <laughs> we'll get to it. The killer <laughs> sent taunting letters and cryptograms to police and newspapers. He was dubbed the Zodiac Killer because some of his cryptograms included astrological symbols and references. A 340-character cipher has been a mystery to investigators for all these years until Australian software engineer Sam Blake... American cryptographer David Oranchuk and Belgian software engineer Jarl Van. Slash Pigeon. (laughs) Slash Pigeon. (laughs) New new Kim. (laughs) Jarl Van Pigeon (laughs) said they finally got the symbols, numbers, and letters to mesh into a coherent, though chilling, message. So here Mm -hmm. is what that message says. And I will say that the, the killer uses the word paradise but he spells it wrong. He's mm-hmm. in, it's a uh, P A R A D I C E instead of S E. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he spells it wrong a couple of times. So here's mm-hmm. what the message says. I hope you are having lots of fun in trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise or paradice. <laughs> the killer allegedly wrote it wasn't immediately clear what television show the zodiac killer could have been referencing mm-hmm. um he continues quote all the sooner because i now have enough slaves to work for me where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradice so they are afraid <laughs> of death i am not afraid because i know that my new life is life will be an easy one in paradice death Okay. In a statement from FBI headquarters on Friday, this past Friday, as we record, so probably a couple of Fridays ago after this gets published, the Bureau said its own cryptanalysis and racketeering records unit, or the CRRU, crew, crew. acknowledged and confirmed the code breaker's work. Quote, over the past 51 years, crew has reviewed numerous proposed solutions from the public none of which had merit, said the FBI. The cipher was recently solved by a team of three private citizens. And again, imagine the thrill when they knew that they'd cracked it. There must have been so many shit pants in that room. I don't know how these people even got together because, again, the internet is probably on some board, mm -hmm, some Reddit forum, yeah. There was an Australian, an American, and a Belgian. Yeah. Who worked together on this? That just it's blows. It's just like the cats thing. It blows the don't my fuck mind. With cats or whatever. Right. Oh yeah, it is. It's holy. Totally mm-hmm. The don't fuck with cats. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Wow. The Zodiac Killer has never been caught, and the case is still active. So this fucker is possibly still alive out there. It's possible. Or is dead, or is in prison under some other charge, like whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm just excited to see. Mm-hmm. I would be super fucking jazzed if this person got solved was just, in our lifetime. Can you like, a, go- like a golden state a golden state killer it situation? Would, it would totally be another 
Golden State Killer yeah. level. They just sh- like, they just show up at his door one day, knock on the door, and mm-hmm. like, hey, mm-hmm. you're under arrest for like some brutal murders, like fucking even fifty years he, ago. Even if he is dead or died in prison, which is a theory you for could sure, just solve it. Yeah, to just be able to solve it because he killed a lot of people well, he, in I, a short he, amount of he time. He only yeah. killed five people, but I say right, only. He shot, but they are they were very brutal. They're awful i mean one murder is too many Mm -hmm. but it's just so fucking creepy there was a tweet by i'm sorry i don't know but it went viral not by any of us it was like a tweet by somebody else that was like um I, i love imagining the zodiac killer like old in some like assisted living just like raging about his cipher finally being cracked and like muttering whatever and then having a nurse come over and tell him to like hush up now (laughs) take your medicine let's get you back to bed (laughs) sure thing grandma i always think of uh uh, that meme that's like oh back in my day we ordered netflix dvds by mail And there's like a nurse going, okay, honey, let's get you okay. back to bed. I'm sure you did, Grandma. <laughs> let's get you back to bed. Like, oh, fuck. That, that was like six sense. years ago. Uh-huh, sure. Oh, God. That checks out. Okay, so, quote, the FBI is aware that a cipher attributed to the Zodiac Killer was recently solved by private citizens. The FBI San Francisco office said in a statement Uh, Quote, the Zodiac Killer case remains an ongoing investigation for the FBI San Francisco and our local law enforcement partners. So, whew. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, this could be a good step in the right direction. I mean, because aren't there other codes, too, now? Yeah, but I think some are broken. Some are still unbroken. Is Mm -hmm. that right? Well, he the sent, spelling I error, he sent a couple, I mean, that could be oh, a big clue. The There's spelling a spelling error, yeah. There's actually a lot in there that could be a good clue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Calling probably what is like a news segment, calling it the TV show. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like that he thought that like the people that he killed, I would assume, are like him collecting slaves that would work for him in paradise. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, it's just going to be a downward spiral into cracking the rest of his bullshit and figuring oh, I out hope who you're the fuck right. it yeah. was. It's I gonna so be like the Rosetta right. Stone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That would be fucking amazing. Hopefully. Can you imagine being able to see the Golden State Killer and the Zodiac be solved in our lifetime? I And that's pretty amazing. In yeah. like two a two year span. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also wasn't there like somebody arrested for um Madeline McCann recently? Oh, I think oh, so. Oh, really? Uh, am I complete? Did this I ring a bell? This? Or Natalie Holloway? No, I don't think that's right. No, no, the, Riveting. The content. Madeline McCann <laughs> shit is. <laughs> Have you watched the Netflix documentary on Nat- on Madeline McCann? Yes. Not yeah. yet. Oh, my list. honey. Okay, it's... there's a German suspect. Mm. There's some suspect. Whatever. I'm sorry. I'm not caught up on the story, but I saw a headline. Okay. That's fair. Mm-hmm. All right. So moving along, I have one last thing. This is this month's obituary area. Obituary. Obituary area. And this one was sent to me by Kirsten Simmons. Thank you to Kirsten. 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 There's no way to know. K. Simmons. So this is the obituary of Thomas Edwin Dupar Sr. The American Bar Association regrets to announce the passing of Thomas Edwin Dupar Sr. on June 4th, 2020. After four marriages that end in divorce Mm. and four bankruptcies, he kept many ABA members gainfully employed. Oh, my God. So he wasn't even a lawyer himself. (laughs) No. Incredible. (laughs) No, he was not. Oh, my God. (laughs) Conceived on October 29th, 1929, the date of the biggest stock market crash ever, Tom was born on July 29th, 1930, to Francis A. and Ethel L. Dupar of Laurelhurst, Washington. He graduated Roosevelt High School and attended the University of Washington. He graduated from San Francisco City College. 
Dupar had a career with his father's company, Western Hotels, known today as Weston Hotels and oh, Resorts. Oh, shit. Mm, okay, still thriving. Mm-hmm. Under a different name. Cut short after dipping his pen in Company Inc. Are you starting <gasps> oh. to see a pattern? Oh, He liked no. to dip his pen in a <laughs> lot of places. <laughs> sounds like. He sounds like a cheater. Just going to say. <laughs> Asked how he remembered his various anniversary dates, Tom slyly stated, married them all on the same day. Oh, <gasps> okay. <laughs> oh, I like this guy. <laughs> Senior was the sixth of eight children. Tom spent quality time with his father and brothers fishing at various Northwest lakes. On one trip, legend has it that he was taught how to blow air through a straw into the business end of a toad. <gasps> well, he, he like was six- up a toad's ass? Yes. He oh, was successful. Honey. Better blowing than sucking. He was successful until one backfired all over his face, hence the nickname Wart Face. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. What a nickname. Wart, wart face. face. I want to go down in history as Wart Face. I mean, I'm oh looking at God. his portrait right now. He's, he doesn't have like a warty face. I think it was just a joke. Dupar served in the Korean War in the United States Army Signal Corps. Tom was a Seattle native to his core, but a transplant to the Palm Springs area for the last 30 years. A special thanks to the staff at Mission Hills Assisted Living and Eisenhower Medical Center staff. Hmm. Tom was preceded in death by his sisters, Dorothy Lynch. Great salad dressing, by the way. Dorothy Lynch. <laughs> Dorothy Lynch salad dressing. Have you never I've had? I've never heard of that. No. So that felt, that went completely it over my is head. A salad probably, it's dressing. probably her was like salad Newman's dressing. Own? It's a, it's like a watered down French dressing. I like that. Like a Catalina, like a watered down Catalina. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Marilyn McIntosh, brothers Frank, Jack, Bob, and Jimmy. He is survived by his brother's Reverend Ken Dupar of Scotland. Tom had four children that we know of. He is survived by his daughter, Michelle, sons, John, uh, Tom, Mark, and his favorite son-in-law, Charles. He has five gorgeous granddaughters, two grandsons, and four beautiful great-granddaughters. Tom was a past member of the Seattle Yacht Club, a board member at the Desert Princess of Palm Springs HOA, and a lifetime wow. member of Rotary International and trustee at the Dupar Foundation. Doesn't Tom, mention his fourth wife. <laughs> doesn't mention any of his wives. Uh-uh. A lot of accomplishments. Yeah. For, what a busy man. Tom most proudly served as the chief of Decatur Island, Washington Fire Department. His last words to the attending nurses staff were, Why is this taking so damn long? <laughs> 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 okay, I feel that deeply. <laughs> Where the hell's my wiener? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Senior, you were one of a kind. You will be missed, but most certainly not forgotten by your loving family and friends. Memorial service date is pending. In lieu of flowers, raise a glass of cheap, cheap scotch. Two fingers, Whoa. measured pinky and index, which was my favorite part. That's funny. That's funny. I like that. It's technically two fingers, but it's a I, solid four inches. I, I don't like that. Well, I don't have any scotch on my bar, so I can't even acquiesce this request. I can have some bourbon, but I'm going to teach Zach that well, two fingers measured pinky two and index. <laughs> right. So let's raise a little quick glass to Thomas Edwin Dupar Sr. Cheers mm-hmm. to you, wart face. Wart face. Here's looking at you, wart face. Here's, Here's looking, looking at you, at you wart, wart face. face. That was the first edit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the working title. <laughs> Here's looking at you, wart face. <laughs> All right. My god. Well, well, well done. That was fun. Okay. That was joyful. Well, special to, thanks to, to no to one except for us. Special thanks to us and everybody who sent us funny headlines and coven confessions and bizarre stories for Corner Corner. Yes. Keep them coming. We appreciate it. Please do. Yes. And we will see you next month with an all new Gas by the Corpse Care. 
Yeah, next that we month will. it'll be 2021, y'all. Thank Oh my god. God. All right. See you then. It's time. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Podcasts. And if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers!